In the first video of this series, we went to nasdaq.com and we downloaded three different CSV files which contained symbol and stock information for all of the stocks on the NYSE, NASDAQ, and Amex stock exchanges. And we extracted the data um, from that CSV and we stored it in the database. So if I go over to my stocks table here, we'll see that we have all of these symbols from those three different exchanges stored here, along with the company name and some other basic information about the stock. So if I come back over to my table here, we'll see that the next thing we need to do is we need to grab some historical data for each of the stocks in order to form the winning streak and the losing streak. You'll see that by default, this table is showing the winning streaks. So this symbol, um, this stock APA right here, um, currently has a winning streak of eight. It's been going up for the past eight consecutive days. And if we click on the streak button again, we'll see the losing streaks. Um, ADC has gone down for the past six days. So in order to get this information, I first needed to download this historical data. And specifically what I need is the symbol name and I need the closing prices um, for at least the last 20 or 30 days. However, the data that I got has the entire um, historical data since the stock's inception, but we can also work with that in order to form these streaks. So all we're going to talk about in this video is how we can grab all of those different CSV files with the historical stock data for each of these symbols, and we're going to do that programmatically. If we go into a new tab here, and then I paste in this URL, um, you'll see we're going to fetch from ichart.finance.yahoo.com slash table.csv and in the query string we're going to put s equals and then any stock symbol for example yahoo's and we'll hit enter and you can see that this table.csv has downloaded now so if we take a look at this csv file here we'll see the different fields it has is the date um, the opening price of that uh, trading date, the high price in the day, the low price in the day, the closing price, uh, the volume, which is the number of shares traded, and also the adjusted close, which is almost always the same as the closing price. So what we're going to do in a future video is we're going to store all of these different rows um, within a summaries table, and that table just stands for um, the daily price summaries for each of the different stocks. So you'll notice the way that I fetched this one was just through the browser. I just put that into the URL string. Um, however, you're not going to want to do this for 6,400 different stocks. So we're going to want to do this programmatically, um, download it within our PHP script, and then store it in an appropriate folder. So what we have within this fetch historical stock data function is all of the code we need to fetch each one of those CSV files and store them into a folder. The first thing you're going to do is set an infinite time limit for your script. Uh, this could take anywhere from half an hour to an hour to finish, depending on your connection speed. So you're not going to want to have the script killed um, in the middle just because of your uh, PHP time limit. So make sure to set um, an infinite time limit there. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to get a list of all of the symbols from our stocks table. Within Laravel, you can do that with DB table and pass stocks. And because the thing that we're returning right here is going to be about 6,000 rows, you're going to want to do your best to keep this um, result set as small as you can. So we're not going to do a select star. We're only going to select um, the columns which we need, which is symbol. Once we have all of those different stock symbols, we're going to loop over them for each stock as stock. And the first thing we're going to check is if we need to store this or not. So it's possible that when you're running this script, um, it got killed for whatever reason and you downloaded half of the CSVs but you still have another half to go. So the first thing we're going to check is if we've already downloaded that CSV. Um, if we have then we don't need to do any of this stuff and we're just going to go to the next iteration of the loop. So if we haven't downloaded that CSV yet we're going to go into this try catch statement and the first thing we're going to do right here is we're going to run file put contents. The first argument for file put contents is the path where we want to store it. So for this demo, I'm going to store it um, within my app folder slash resources, historical list, and then the symbol name dot CSV. The second argument for file put contents is going to be a file get contents. 
and you're going to pass file get contents um, the URL that you want to fetch. So what file put contents is going to return um, if it was successful and it was able to um, write the file it's going to return the amount of bytes that it stored. However, if it wasn't able to store anything, this is just going to return false. So the next check we're doing is if we store any bytes, um, we are going to print some feedback for us, stored CSV for this symbol, and then we're going to show the amount of bytes. And then finally, I'm concatenating a PHP EOL because I'm going to be running this over the command line. You can run this script through the browser or the command line. Um, the end result is going to be the same. So the advantage of doing it over the command line is you're going to get that instant feedback. You're going to know what's going on as the script is executing. And you also have the option to kill the script at any time with control C. If you run this in the browser, you have no way to kill the PHP script. Um, even if you close the browser um, that's running the script, it's still going to be running in the background. So like I said, the script I gave you, you can run it over the command line or through the browser. Um, I'm using the Laravel framework, and we can run our script uh, through the command line using um, Artisan Tinker. So I'll just um, show you how that works. So to load up Tinker, we'll type PHP Artisan Tinker, and we're going to get this command line that we can interact with our PHP application with. And what I'm going to paste in here is some PHP and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to instantiate the new API controller. We can do that just by placing it within parentheses and then we're going to access the fetch historical data uh, method right there. Let's just end that with a semicolon and once we run this what it's going to do is it's going to download each of those CSVs one by one and store them in the location uh, that we said with file put contents and we're also getting some feedback here um, of the stock that we finished it for and the amount of bytes we're writing. So like I said, you could run this script through the browser or the command line. However, the advantages of the, of the command line is we're getting this instant feedback um, as our script is executing. Um, unlike the browser where you're going to have to wait for the entire script to finish before it gives you a big response at the end. And we can also kill this script at any time by typing Control-C